Hey YouTube, I'm Sergeant Indy and this is Everspace by Rockfish Games. They're a German group. Uh, they were the guys who worked on Galaxy on Fire and they've all sort of migrated over to Rockfish and they're putting this out. This is a pretty cool six degrees of freedom shooter with roguelike elements and honestly it kind of plays like FTL except instead of being a real-time strategy game you're zipping around kind of like Star Fox or whatever. Um, anyway, it's a pretty neat game and it's the first game that I've played and really felt like, you know what, I think I want to let's play this. I have played for a while, this isn't completely blind or anything, I just, you know, screwed around with it for a bit and decided that this is what I wanted to do. That's about it, so I guess we get in there, and for the first part, I am going to go through the tutorial and I'll explain how the controls and everything work while I'm doing that. So this first video is probably going to be a lot of a robot talking at me more than anything else. But let's get in there and let's uh, see what Everspace has to offer. And I like third, because you didn't do a lot of zipping around like through busted up old spaceships and it helps. And I definitely play inverted. I grew up playing a lot of like X-Wing versus TIE Fighter kind of games and inverted stick feels natural to me. Pilot requires further training. Activating automatic assistance. Stand by. Uh, assistance? I suppose I could use some pointers. Alright, so you go forward and backward with the left trigger and bumper respectively. You can turn left and right with the right stick and up and down with the right stick. The left stick sort of just sort of moves you around. So you can go like, like backwards and right and up. Got a lot of freedom in how you move around. It's non-Newtonian, which Frankly, that's fine by me. Newtonian physics in space combat is... It's its accurate, and some people are into that. I think it is accurate. I don't think it's very fun, though, so I prefer to zip around like this. Let's begin by shooting targets. Well, that seems easy enough. Shoot targets. Your primary weapon with right trigger. The next targets have shields. First, use the pulse laser to deplete their shields. When the shields are down, use the Gatling gun to inflict greater hull damage. Okay. So weapons Understood. tend to fall into two categories. There's weapons that are good against shields and weapons that are good against hull. There are weapons that do pretty broad and even damage to both, but that tends to be how the game works. So we've got the shields down, switch to the Gatling gun, and chew them up. Him and more of the same. Missiles on the next targets. Set a target lock before shooting so the missiles can home in. Target lock with the right stick? I think. Yeah, right stick. Fire a missile. Your secondary weapons are on RB, the shoulder, right next to your shooting trigger. Pretty easy. It appears as if you're ready for the next stage. I have created a jump target. Aim towards it and hold steady to leave the orbit. After each transit, your jump drive requires a cooling down phase. As soon as it is ready for another jump, I will create one. Now there is no built-in roll to the standard controls, but you can click and hold the right stick to roll left and right. It was actually kind of a bummer when I first started playing, but once I got used to the controls, the game's halfway decent about kind of auto-rolling you, so you don't tend to need to roll often, but, you know, typically you're flying like a World War II or a space flight sim. Rolling is usually super important. I was kind of bummed out when it first started, but like I said, the controls, once you get used to them, they're pretty intuitive. They feel natural. It doesn't really matter where I go. Now, currently this map seems pretty dull and boring. I mean, it's a bunch of unknown risk points leading to a jump gate. Eventually, you'll be able to upgrade your sensors and you'll know like, oh, that's a, that's, a, that's a red spot. I don't want to go there. But for now, I'm kind of just choosing blind. That's fine. I will choose blind. I'm just going to go along the upper path. No big deal. As you can see from your fuel gauge, a substantial amount was consumed during transit. You should aim to refill the jump drive completely. There is a mineable asteroid nearby. Shoot at it to extract fuel. All right. And there's the mineable fuel. Now, I think, I'm not sure if they've actually told me this yet. You can click and hold the left stick for a boost. 
Makes you significantly faster. Okay, I am now topped off on fuel. I could keep mining, but there's nothing really here. Remaining well provisioned is key up. to survival in the cluster. Before leaving the orbit, it is recommended you explore the location for resources. To speed things up, use a scanning probe. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, your ship has built-in sensors. It'll pick up another ship at around two kilometers, but picking up like containers with useful items in it or, in it or whatever. That's only a, like a at half a kilometer. It's kind of a bummer. So scanning probes come in real handy. These containers, you just get close enough to them, you ah, throw some rounds into them, and, and a weapon. they'll give but us something like this. Free slot so I don't have a free slot to install this. This does more hull DPS, but less shield DPS. And has a little bit better energy consumption rate. I'll, I'll talk about energy consumption in just a second, too. I think I will equip this just for the sake of equipping a new weapon and showing something off. And we'll salvage the old one, which will give us some scrap Decide for ore, yourself et whether you want to equip or salvage it. Resources are essential for crafting and upgrading your equipment. It appears, however, that we have exhausted our possibilities here. I suggest advancing to the next location. Okay. If I if this rocks in the way I can't I can't jump, I actually have to go around. Let's you know what, we we got some time and this is the tutorial, so they sort of like your first two sets are uh, pretty boring. There's not a lot to do there. Let's we might as well talk about UI and stuff over here. Top left I've got blue bar for shields and an orange bar, that's my hull. Below that there's a zero out of twenty. That's how many uh, I think they call them nanobots I have. You use those to repair your hull and repair damage subsystems. Across the top, beam laser, light missile, weapon override, scanning probe, those are my activatable things. And you can switch between them if you have more than one by hitting the D-pad in different directions. So up, I can toggle between my Gatling and beam laser, but it looks like that's the only thing I've got more than one of right now. Top right, I've got my fuel tank. I have four jumps, that's why it's divided into four quadrants like that. And I'm at 100% fuel, below that is my money, 300 credits. Uh, credits are important. You can not only buy things in game with credits or by trading resources you have like you know, Give me 20 units of fuel for six units of ore or whatever It's also used when you die you get to a menu where you can buy a bunch of perks or whatever to level up And so there's like a persistent progress between runs, which is kind of cool. I like that. It's becoming fashionable and rogue like like likes or whatever we're calling them in bagels that bagel comment is a really inside joke. Kudos if you get it. Uh, there was a Russian language interview that somebody did about this game, and I guess they don't really have a word for roguelike, and so they just sort of put it out phonetically. Something like, like roguelike or something like that. I forget what the guy said in the comments. At any rate, uh, it must have autocorrected, because I guess the word rogue is pretty similar to what they use for bagel, but the press release for this game in Russian said, like, oh, it's a Six Degrees of Freedom shooter with... Uh, with bagel elements or something like that. It's pretty funny. Right, now we should get into an actual scrum here. Like a real fight. There we go. We've got some outlaws, bands of pirates. From what I could tell, there are three factions in this. There's a bunch of, uh, there's like a mining conglomerate that is neutral and sort of controls a good amount of space. There's these pirates or outlaws, and then there's the Okar, who are like a sentient lizard person species and they're really nasty they'll attack you on sight so will the pirates but that's mostly what i found so far so energy they're talking about energy right now and I, we just talked about ui and i was total space kid at i should have mentioned it at the bottom bar uh right where my cursor at is like in the center outlaws independent operators with varying affiliations profiting from trafficking extortion illegal weapons trading piracy clone smuggling Maybe they have something I need. Yeah, he talks too much. Yeah, this thing eats through shields really quick. I kind of like it. There we go, he's down. Let's get the other one in our sights. There is a bit of auto-aim. Your weapons are on sponsons, which I don't particularly mind. This isn't, like, I don't know. X-Wing versus TIE Fighter was the kind of game that required a bit of finesse 
and aiming ahead. There's a bit more hit points in this game, so it tends to be... Like, I'm, I'm okay with the auto-aim. It doesn't bother me. Um, anyway, that bar at the bottom is, like, mostly green with a little bit of orange. That's how much energy I have. Is breathtaking. If you'll notice, like, I boost, it's going down. Goes back up. My weapons usage table. takes it down. The demilitarized zone was created as a buffer zone, monitored by the Oka authorities. Only time will heal the rift between the species. So yeah, there was a big war between the humans and the Okar, the lizard people, and all of this destruction and mayhem in this, like, demilitarized zone we're zipping through right now is a result of that. Let's see, a shock rifle? You know what? What's a shock rifle do? I keep hearing about how shock rifles are really good, so I think I'm going to swap and give it a try. This energized boost, that is a passive? No, it's not. It is an active goes in my third slot where my shield is at. I think I will give this a tr You know what? No, we're going to stick with the weapon overdrive. I'm terrible about using my consumables and active items in this game. I really need to get a lot better. Ooh. Yeah, and if you bump into something, it hurts quite a bit. And I just did it because I'm an idiot. And I'm not very good at video games. I should stick to making them. Fuel compounds, shield breaker missiles. So I tend to like the light missiles over the shield breakers. Shield breakers are all right and all, but I tend to prefer to, you know, zap down their shields and then hit them with a quick missile to finish them off. So these aren't really my style. They're good missiles and you might find a use for them, but they're not really doing anything for me. You have extracted raw materials. These are essential for crafting and upgrading, but you will require much more. And I currently can't craft or upgrade anything because I just reset my playthrough, so that's kind of a bummer. What are you going to do? Another tech container here. Let's see what kind of goodies we got. A taste for cast -offs, by the looks of things. Coil gun. You know what? That just seems like an all-around better version of my beam laser. I think we're going to... Oh my god, look at that energy consumption. That's brutal. Maybe we should... St you know what? I am going to stick with this. I tend to have energy problems, especially as the game progresses. So the orange on that bar right now, if I, if I go here, we can see better. This is your main menu. You can look at your equipment. You can build stuff if you have... Oh, I guess I have energy objector and scanner probe. We need to get some gas so I can make some more probes. Um, your subsystems can be damaged and destroyed. You'd come here to repair them. Come here to repair your general hull, star map, stats, codex, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, my shield right now, um, if you'll notice right side of the screen it says uh, where is it energy allocation 12 so that's what that orange is is I have this subsystem my shields that are constantly essentially taking 12 energy away from me so it's lowered my maximum and that's what that bit on the bar is all about and you gotta be careful there's a lot of like passives in this game that will, uh, base. scavengers and raiders of every degree take ply the demilitarized zone using these hidden structures to launch operations I would advise caution on approach. Maybe it's worth the risk. Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah, a bunch of a car That's just jumped just in. What I need. Or maybe it's just more outlaws. At any rate, I've kind of got a. I tend to like to take the uh, drones out first. They've got less hit points, but they don't move around much, so they're like pinpoint accurate. So I tend to view them as a pretty significant threat, despite the fact that they're pretty easy to take out. But that's my only real like pro tip for playing this game right now is if you see drones, you should probably kill them first. There we go. Okay, so energy front shield generator blueprint. That's an item we can build. That's pretty cool. More credits. Credits are love. Credits are life. Up here. We got a container and some mineable crystal. Crystal is super important. It's generally like the most rare and hard to get a hold of subsystem blueprint. So this will increase my armor and make me tougher to kill. How about I swap this and take a look at Ooh, that's, that's some rough energy allocation right there. You know what? I'm going to keep stick with it. But if I do stick with it, I should salvage this at least. 
I'm gonna stick with it. I'm probably gonna forget about the weapon override anyway, so... It just kind of makes sense for me to armor up instead. I really do need to get better about using those things, though. Really do. Crystal... Enough resources for crafting. I don't know what I can craft. Can I craft... Can I craft scanning probes? No. Well then, who cares? Scanning probes, I feel, are probably one of the most important items in the game. And that could be completely off base. I haven't played a lot. Maybe I'm completely wrong. But, I don't know. I've, I've always felt that intel is important. Like, you can't fight if you don't know what you're fighting. You can't pick up resources if you don't know where you're at. So, being able to scan all that stuff is really good. Especially since, like I was saying, your normal scanners only pick up bad guys at two kilometers and they only pick up containers. You practically have to have eyes on them before they pick up. So, if you gotta, like, zip through a place like this trying to look for containers without a scanning probe, it's, it's a pretty big bummer. All right, we are at the jump gate. Jump gates are the primary method of travel between systems. These were built by greedy and brunt prospects for their mining drones to reach areas more efficiently. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Now you want me to use this? It is the only way to the next sector, so, yes. Okay. So if you don't have any scanners up, like scanning probes, and you have to rely on your built-in ship scanners, yeah. Look how close I had to get to that before it popped up. Generally, a good idea is... Damage booster mark two, it's consumable. You know what, I think I will take that over the anti-missile drone. Ooh, that was really dumb. All right, so generally you can kind of poke around and look at the wider picture, like that big asteroid I just went to. That was clearly a, a point of interest. The jump gate itself might have some stuff around it, this big clot of asteroids, maybe I should fly through here. It tends to be able to, like, there we go, mineable fuel. There's something. And I am, I've only got, like, two jumps left. I probably should pick up some fuel. Well, like, two and a half jumps left, but a half jump is worth exactly what you think it's worth. Nothing. Yeah, that uh, energy consumption is really, really brutal right now. Oh, I forgot. I was like, why is my Gatling gun not shooting? And it's not shooting because I don't have a Gatling gun anymore. That appears to be a G and B something or another. Let's go. Let's zip up through here real quick. Wait, what do we got over here? Who is that? Car drone. Two of them. That'll be our first run in with the car, really. Okay, cool. That's a service station. Oh, wait. I got bogeys on my six, too. Outlaw scouts. Outlaws have not very good shields, but have a lot of hull. Let's try the shock rifle. Ooh, wow, that was pretty good damage. Not even following my, my own advice. I should have killed that, uh... Should have killed that drone first. Credits. I'll take these, thank you. Fusion blaster. I've used one of these before. They have, like, massive shield DPS. I don't think their range is very good. No, it's not. You know what? I think I'm going to stick with what I got for now. You can unlock more, like, slots for weapons through that uh, upgrade menu I was talking about earlier. I'm What's pretty happy testing these out for one. Grady and Brunt Prospects, corporate behemoth and sole legitimate operator in the demilitarized zone. Their monopoly has ensured unchecked... Pick up some crystal... for... Hmm, 500 bucks. I'm doing okay on ore. I think I will pick Expansion. up the crystal. You will encounter their jump gates and mining drones frequently. That is a GMB container. I could take that, but it would piss off GMB, and we don't want to do that. So they're neutral, and they'll fight the Okar or the Outlaws alongside the you. Channel here? But the Okar are a reptilian race with a tendency towards reactive behavior. They are indigenous to the cluster. And the colonials uninvited guests. 
distrust runs deep. So far, I'm really liking the shock rifle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, like I was trying to say before, I was rudely interrupted by tutorialization and backstory. What a bunch of jerks, right? Um, crystal is really important to repair subsystems. I so far haven't lost a subsystem, but... I mean, it really sucks if you're like, missiles go out and you can't use them anymore. It's kind of a big deal. So I'd really rather be stocked up on crystals rather than, you know, flying around with my sensors broken or something. All right, outlaws. You've reached the next sector. Very good. What's my objective? Reaching your destination. And where is that? It's still a long way to go. You will understand more when we get there. I would prefer some more substance to your answers. Whoa. Okay. Well, I just died. So what happened there is that I took some pretty heavy shield damage, and then I just slammed headlong into a pirate. I didn't think that was going to happen. It was pretty abrupt. But what are you going to do? So, what did I get? What did I get? Um, oh, you can change how your ship looks. I tend to like the default until you unlock more colors. Let's put some more or orange on it. That looks pretty slick. This is the perks menu like I was talking about earlier. I think I'm going to save my credits and upgrade at the beginning of each video. That way we can talk about up what upgrades I'm going to do and then fly around with those upgrades, I suppose. Even though this video is gonna be a little short. I was I was looking at a standard video for this game to be about. God, probably be about an hour, but well, it was abrupt death, but what are you gonna do? Um, but yeah, these are all the upgrades you can get. I think I'm gonna talk about that at the beginning of the next video, and then we'll get right into it. You know what, let's talk about what there is now, and then I'll spend the credits next video. We've got some time. So, top left, upgrade your critical hit chance and critical hit damage. This will reveal more information on the map like I was talking about. Um, the next level will show us like what color each zone is like rather than they all being gray and we don't know what thread is, it'd be like yellow or orange or red. Uh, these drop crafting costs, that's important. These increase mining yield. This lets you start with random bonus resources on board, it's also kind of cool. This is your credit loot bonus, it's obviously super important since you use credits to level yourself up. It's really important to uh, push this up as high as possible early on. So is the rare loot chance. That's more likely to get a cool weapon or something like that. Um, I never actually got around to using any nanobots. You'd go to your repair menu like I showed you. You'd hit the rep repair hull thing and then your hull would tick up as the nanobots get to work. This will increase how much they repair and like how quickly they repair. Somewhere around here, I could have sworn you could also upgrade your shields. Maybe not. Component damage repair costs, this will lower... Oh no, yeah, this will lower how likely you are to have your components destroyed. This will lower the cost of repairing them. This will help you with traders and stuff. Um, down here is how you unlock more slots. So you can get like a third weapon or second missile slot, for instance. More hull head points, pretty straightforward. Uh, more energy core, which is super useful. Same with energy regeneration. Max speed and boost speed, both also sort of important. And then your fuel capacity to make so you can have more jumps worth of fuel in your tank. Anyway, that about wraps this one up. This has been Everspace by Rockfish Games. I'm Sergeant Indy. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.